Baie welkom by die getuinis. Ons kan vandag saam met Chais Monaghan. Hy het die geest van ver, verslaving en verwerping gehad, maar dan die Heere, wanneer hy kom, dan bring hy die goed in die licht. Wanneer jou leven betaai keer, so die mekaar is, maar jy kan nie pinpoint van waar af die probleem kom nie. Wat is die wortel van my omstandighede, hoe kom my leven die heeltijd soos een rounder kouster voel nie? Dit is hoe Chais gevoel het, maar die Heere het dit in die lichaam gebring en hy was daarvan bevry. So kom ons luister wat sy getuinis is en hoe hy daarvan vry gekom het. Chais, baie welkom. Dankie. Jy het in een baie goeie huis groot geword, maar daar was een story wat die vijand gekom het en hy het iets gebruik om verwarring in jou identiteit te gebring het. En as gevolg van die verwarring in identiteit, het jy keeses in jou leven gemaakt en in een a verslaving ingeval. Vertaal nie deers een bykie van jou achtergrond. Ok, Junita, we grew up in a very Christian home. Um, my mom was a Christian, my dad was a Christian, and things were going well for the longest time. Uh, we grew up, my mom had us go to church Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. She was a part of the the uh, voorsangers in the kerk, <laughs> yeah, if you want to call it that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, life was good in the hood. <laughs> And um, so, as time went by, uh, something happened and developed in my mom and dad's marriage, which led them to um, separate. They got divorced. And it was then that my identity basically got stolen from getting any kinds of attention from my parents or my dad because they were too busy trying to sort out their own lives Mm -hmm. that my brothers and I were basically left to do our own thing. And uh, it was then that, I started turning to the wrong people, the wrong friends, and I started to find more of a father figure in in the very wrong people, drug dealers and, 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 and friends at school that were doing the wrong things. And I tried to get myself an identity of, I guess you wouldn't call it that time, a macho man identity. And I would just try smoking cigarettes is where it started in high school. And then later it became a, a, a Dacha addiction. I actually started smoking Dacha quite a lot. Mm-hmm. And that stuck with me for many, many, many years. Mm. Jy sien, daar so, as gevolg van die, as ek het in Engels kan sê, the absence of a father, dit wees vir jou hoe belangrijk dit is, vir een paar figuur, om betrokken te wees, vooral in sy kindse leven, en, en daar het jy die aanvaring gesoek van die wereld, en die vijand het dit gesien, as a gap, as ek het so kan sê, en hy het jou kom aanval, en die, en, en, en jou identiteit verwaar, dier dat jy in dwelms ingeval het, maar dit het nie nie daar gestop nie, want op die aanwend het jy een fantastische vroukie ontmoet, wat gedink het, sy gaan jou kan verander, maar dit is nie die mens wat jou kan verander nie, want as jy die, die geest van verslaving het, dan kan, as jy nie proper bevrijding kry nie, dan is dit wat dan nou leid, dat jy nou nog, nog meer goed is soek, en die geest van addiction het jou, het jou nog meer laat verlang na goed, en dit het erger gehoor. Vertaal vir ons, hoe was jou leven en jou hevelik gewees? Uh, dit is precies wat gebeur het, maar waar van aan met um, in a flat, I was living in a block of flats, and I met her, and I was still, I was fully smoking dag at that time, and I was actually in college already, studying aircraft maintenance, and um, I met my wife, she met me knowing that I was, you know, using and smoking and I guess she was okay with it at the time um, because she kind of grew up in a home where it was susceptible as well. And uh, as time went by, um, we got more engaged and, you know, we. I, I, I only smoked Dachai at that time, but then when we got married and we had our first son Xander, I was introduced to another drug and uh, that's kind of where everything went south. I started using this drug called CAT, which is a drug that elevates all your senses. It keeps you awake for days on end. You don't sleep, you have no, you, there's no way that your brain can switch off. You, you're constantly awake. Um, it's similar to a drug that they know as TUC, but it's just a, a snortable type of drug. Now, when this entered my marriage, um, that's where everything went completely wrong. Um, my wife was kind of getting fed up slowly but surely. And it was there that I also started to become an absent father myself. I was away all the time. I spent nights out. Um, that drug made it so that you can't sleep, you can't sit still, you can't sit and watch a movie, you can't um, uh, 
do anything really. You just have to keep moving, keep functioning, keep doing something to keep yourself busy. And uh, my family couldn't provide that for me at the time. And I just wanted to be out and out and about in the streets. And so that took a tremendous strain on my marriage. And um, it your vrouw, as I mag vrouw, it your vrouw op die storm geweet, jy gebruik die drag. So I, she found out after a couple of months of me using it, she did find out. Um, um, it was strangely brought in and I actually used it with my brother, my younger brother, and um, we were using that for a very long time. Well, actually for not, a, not such a long time until she found out, but she found out and then I kind of reassured her that it's okay, you know, and I'm actually just using it for weight loss and I, I came up with all kinds of excuses and manipulative behavior and, you know, Maar dit is eindelijk een baie gevaarlijke draak, want selfs by jou werk, het mense dit ook nie eers achter, jy kan, jy, as jy die draak gebruik, is bitter min, bitter, bitter min mense wat dit kan sien dat jy dit gebruik, want dit is, jy, jy kan normaal functioneer, maar jy kan nie, jy kan nie dink nie, jy kan nie lekker dink nie, vertel vir ons, hoe, wat doen die draak aan jou? Um, you can think, and you, you're very awake, you're very alert, you're very, um, you always on you like always very wake up and very agitated and very um wake up you just I don't know how else to explain it you're just super awake and super alert and super high um you know that you're on something and it makes you so that you think you're the cleverest you're the nicest you're the smartest nobody can tell you nothing i mean you are like the king of everything when you're on that drug and um it gives you incredible confidence uh, so nobody at work noticed that they actually thought I was an, a fantastic employee. Um, I worked for quite a big company at one point, and um, it was in that company that my boss actually caught me using it at a at a boardroom table. I, I kind of thought they had already left after a meeting, and I used it, and they caught me red-handed, and that's kind of like where even my career took a bit of a spiral. Sure. And yeah, tired. But I would say, it's a lack of for a, for a bit in the mall. In omgee, want so so say your vrouw jou probeer help. Mense kan jou help tot op 'n punt. Um, in in so het jou maal ook vir jou gebed. In 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 op 'n sonder met sy besluit nie, maar nou vandag moet jy nou die kese maak. En sy wil jou nou 'n rehab toe stuur. Vertel vir ons die proses waar dier jy gegaan het in die rehab. Um, my mom and dad got together and they worked out a plan to get me into a, a rehab called Nopeut Christian Care Centre. It's in the Karoo, and um. Honestly, no boot was the best thing that ever happened to me. If it wasn't for that rehabilitation program and the lengthy one-year recovery process, I would have never kicked the habit. Mm. But um, another thing that uh, really, the only thing that actually worked in that recovery program was the fact that it was a Christian mm. a Christian care center. Okay. And the whole entire recovery program is based on the foundation of Jesus. Wow. And if it wasn't for Jesus, I would have... I would have never made it out of that program. Um, there was a time in that recovery program that the Lord gave me a scripture saying, come out from among them and be separate. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you and I will be a father to you. Aww. Yeah, Aww. And so that meant a lot to me and I held on to that promise. Aww. But um, before going into rehab, it was actually so bad that my wife had filed for a divorce. Uh, my kids were taken away from me. Um, my mom actually had a court section put together to say that I was a danger to myself and to my kids and because mm. I was going like seven days at a time without sleep and I started hallucinating and it started getting very bad. And uh, it was in Nopeur that one, uh, nopeur has got a lot of pastors that, that, that run the rehab or it did at that time when I was there. Um, and one of the pastors there, uh, I'm actually going to say his name, Pastor Ben Magni. He was a big, uh, a big great mentor of mine. So the pastor Ben Magni told me about um, about Jesus and that my, the foundation of Jesus would be the only way that I would be able to find recovery completely and entirely. And I did. And um, he also taught me about the importance of deliverance. Yeah. And that without deliverance, um, I'll just keep falling back into the problem and I won't be able to, to, to figure it out. And it was because of that pastor that I actually took a liking to the the ministry of deliverance. Mm. And um, yeah, so my marriage in Nopeur, the section where I was headed was, <laughs> my marriage um, was completely done. I had given up complete hope and, you know, I, I, I had 
realized that my marriage was over and that I was in recovery for myself. But it was there that I had a personal encounter with Jesus. And, you know, my life really turned around in that rehab. I grew fruits of the Spirit like very fast while being in there. Because sure. all you can do there really is Jesus. Is Jesus. It's where can care, where can care. So um, I asked God there in the airport. I sat one down, I went down on my knees and I said, Lord, if there's any part of you, you know, that still loves me and, you know, if there's still a chance for me, uh, please restore my marriage. You know, that's all that I want is my, my kids back together, my family back together. And um, God did just that um, in the first visit that I could get at no port because that's like there's a goes a time all that time there was a, a, a strict rule that nobody could visit you until a certain period in your in your rehabilitation. Mm. And the first visit that there was, my wife surprised me. She came with a surprise visit, and there was reconciliation, which I thought would never happen. So, in a nutshell, no human hands could do what God did there. No human hands could have orchestrated the recovery of my marriage that Jesus did. Jy sê het vir my, het is so mooi gemenschen dat daar het jy vaders hart ontdek. A true father's love. Vertel net vir ons, hoe het jy gevoel toe jy vader ontmoet het? In no part, God came and revealed himself to me. And you know, I've heard it many times in my life that uh, the names of God and the name El Roy, meaning the God who sees me. And I never really experienced that until one day I actually worked in the kitchen in the second half of my program. Um, you get moved to a different location called Middleton. And I actually was a kitchen supervisor there. I worked my way up as a supervisor there. And um, I had chances during the day to go and they had this nice river running past the back end of, of Middleton. And uh, I actually went onto a pier there, and that's where I kind of just surrendered everything to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I said, Father, this is it now. Um, and then I had this really great encounter with, I guess, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I started to feel the peace of God working in my life, and I started to feel um, an understanding to Scripture. I started to, you know, it, that's basically where that... God revealed himself to me as the God who sees me. And when that realization hit me, it was over. Then I was sold out. Yeah. The, the pastor had for you said how important befrijding is. And, and you have said befrijding is nodig. And so can you um, celebrate recovery, what the befrijding can do. And in the rehab, you have very much learned from discipline. En, um, en hulle het jou gehelp om ontslaat te raak van hierdie draak, om jou skoon te kry, so dat wanneer jy gaan bevry, of vir bevrijding, word die geestelike wortel ook uitgesorteer. Vertel vir ons een bykie van jou journey in Celebrate Recovery. So many years after No Poort, um, I came out uh, and I worked for a company and as time went by, I started to slowly like disintegrate and backslide. Um, not much, because I still had a quite a strong foundation, but I started smoking cigarettes again which led to me systematically having weekend topper. I started drinking and um, just pry occasionally. And I would make all kinds of excuses, you know, to, to indulge. And uh, long before a short time led me to the Western Cape. And when we arrived here, um, I just one day relapsed. <laughs> yeah. And I smoked uh, Dacha again. And I just thought, you know, I'd do it for Olas on the beach and I, I'll, mm. I'll just get you know, high one more time. And that led to a series of, of of relapse, you know, for a couple of months. And again, my wife found out. She's super good at sniffing things out. <laughs> and uh, she found out again and she told me, listen, you better make a plan and get yourself sorted out. And I did. Uh, I reached out to a church here, a local church, and um, they had the program of Celebrate Recovery. And uh, the pastor, the lead pastor of, of, the, of the recovery group of Celebrate Recovery, actually became my sponsor and my uh, accountability partner. And Celebrate Recovery is a 12-step Christ-centered recovery program. Mm -hmm. um, it's based on the Beatitudes of Jesus. So the Beatitudes on the Mount, mm -hmm. the whole program is based on the Beatitudes. It has 12 steps and eight recovery principles. And I've been in Celebrate Recovery now for the past five years. And Celebrate Recovery is a program that when you work it, when you work the steps of the program, and you join a thing called a, a, um, a step study. Mm -hmm. That's where like 
men will get together and women on their side, so it'll just be gender. Men get together and they work through every step, step by step by step in the program, which uncovers your denial. Uh, you need to face your denial that you, you're powerless to control your own tendency to do the wrong thing and that yeah. without God, you can't, you can't, you can't uh, beat your addiction. Mm -hmm. And Celebrate Recovery is more of an aftercare program, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, Noport is the actual rehab where you do the physical recovery and then um, the spiritual and the spiritual side is is is, is attacked in in Celebrate Recovery. Yeah. And truly, there in Celebrate Recovery is where I found real recovery. Um, and after a while, I, like I mentioned, I started smoking again. Um, it is within Celebrate Recovery that I could deal with. Um, Unforgiveness, unforgiveness, yeah, yes, unforgive. Yeah. So I had to deal with forgiveness. We did a large inventory of um, of all the people that I had wronged and people that had wronged me, mm -hmm. and I made amends to those who had hurt me, and uh, I asked forgiveness for those that I had hurt. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this recovery process, I realized that I got this massive conviction from the Holy Spirit that you know you've let go of all addictions, you still got cigarettes, you need to let it go. It was a more difficult addiction for me to let go than uh, actual my drug addiction was. And I got such a, a large conviction from the Holy Spirit with regards to smoking that I had to let go of it completely and entirely. So that actually it felt like I hit a, a brick wall in my spiritual walk with the Lord. You know, celebrate recovery, I'd done all the forgiveness, I'd done everything, but I felt still something was holding me back from breakthrough in my relationship with the Lord. And the Holy Spirit kept pressing on cigarettes, you know, um, Smoking kept me busy. Well, while I'd be working, I couldn't work for five minutes, then I'd go outside and smoke. I'd come back in, I'd smoke. So something had to go. And um, the one Sunday afternoon, I I sent to my Celebrate Recovery group, because we have a WhatsApp group, I said to everybody there, it was like one o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. I gave the packet of cigarettes to my wife, and I said to her, I'm done. This is it, I'm finished. I went and prayed in the room first, and then I came and I said to the Lord, this is it. And I gave them to my wife. And then I sent uh, everybody a message on the Celebrate Recovery group because everybody in Celebrate Recovery holds you accountable. Yeah. So I said to them, as my forever family, as we call each other, um, they must hold me accountable for my addiction to cigarettes. I've just put it down and I'm done now. And that was incredibly difficult. For three days, it was like a war zone in my house. And um, it was then that I, I, I had booked to go for deliverance. Um, I met a lady in our in our church, and um, she told me that she she knew someone out in Somerset West that actually did uh, deliverance, and um, he deals more with the male side of things. And uh, I went to see him about a week after quitting cigarettes. So I maybe quit the Sunday, the Thursday I went to see him, and after only after that deliverance did that addiction fully break. That want for any kind of addiction, that want for any kind of um, craving for anything it just completely broke and I felt complete freedom and I told my wife and I, I didn't know much of what happened there but I know that things manifest in the, in the physical in the physical oh. and um, it yeah. was dealt with and in Jesus name I was freed oh, and awesome. I'm completely free of all addiction until today I'm Oof, completely you're, you're... free Seven years. Prijs die heren. Ja. Yo, maar ek wil net jy sê, in die begin het ons sê hoe die vijand gekom het om verwarring te bring in jou identiteit, maar die heren het gekom en hy het vir jou gewaas, wees chais. En jy ontdek hier die fantastische talent wat die heren vir jou gegeet het. Chais, vertaal vir ons, wat doen jy vandag saam met die ministry? Ek meen, jy doen ook, uh, jy doen ook bevrijding saam met mense, jy stap die pad saam met hulle. So saam met die ministry het jy jou eie bezigheid ook. Vertaal vir ons een bykie van jou talentvolle bezigheid. Okay, so I have Monan Animation Studio, which is an animation studio that I do 3D animation, um, 2D animation that I'm not too very fond on, but 3D animation, 3D modeling, and um, basically anything revolving around 3D animation. Um, I also have another company that does hosting and website designing. Mm. But uh, So it's Monan Hosting Services and then Monan Animation Studio. Mm. And yeah, they work together. Fantastic. I'm going to say for the Ek het die een dag, toe wees hy, hy roep ons, en hy, en hy wees ons hierdie persoon wat hy op die, op die skerm het, en ek denk toe myself, joop, kyk die detail van hierdie persoon, maar um, hy het hom mooi gemodify, en hy sê nie, hy het hom eindelijk gekreaat, en my mond het opgehang, want dit het gelijk soos een persoon, 
uh, wat de foto geneem het van iemand, maar hy het self hier die man gekry, en dit was soos mindblowing, ek nie gedink, jy kan, jy kan een persoon even kreeg van niks af nie, so as daar enige iemand is, wat wil gaan kyk wat jy is doen, en jy het een kotasie nodig om, jy weet, in die werk wat hy doen, gaan geris op sy webtuis, dan gaan gekoekeloer wat hy doen, en dan contact om vir kotasie, en hy sal jylle met liefde help, en dan ook natuurlijk, as daar enige iemand is, wat vandag met een probleem sik, sikkel, met verwerping, of jy is ook in die, in die vastgevang in die verslaving, en jy weet nie van waar of kom dit nie, contact vir Chais, hy sal met jylle pad stap, en, um, en jylle help om dier bevrijding te gaan, want bevrijding is so belangrijk, om Jesus te ontdek, om jy ware identiteit te ontdek, maar om ons sla te raak, van my geestelike wortel, wat jy so vast hou vir soveel jare, dat jy lever heel die die rouwe kouser is, daar is hoop vir jou, kom net na Chais toe, en hy sal jou help om dier dit te kom, zodat so jij jy ook vry kan wees, Chais, ek weet, jy het vandag een woord vir iemand, wat sy woord sal dit wees? I just want to say that if you are stuck in an addiction, a dark, deep addiction, a hole where you feel like you cannot get out of, I want to tell you today that Jesus can pull you out of the deepest, darkest pit that you'll ever in your entire life think that you cannot get out of. God can restore you. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus and there is a new life waiting for you on the other side. Bye, thank you, Chais. Ek weet as mense wat vandag na hierdie getuienis luister en weet, ek sit in hierdie warwoel en ek het ook hulp nodig. Chais, dankie vir jou getuienis en uit ons dankbaarheid dat jy verskil in iemands leven maak dier jou getuienis. Wil ons vir jou sê, boy, dankie, daar is jou een beker wat uit jy kan drink. Dankie. En altyd sal onthou wat die heren vir jou gedoen het en um, dankie dat jy bereid is ook om mense hoop te gee, om uit hierdie addiction, uit hierdie verslaving en, en verwerping en onvergifnis, dat jy vir hulle kan hoop gee vandag en dat mense jou kan kontak um, vir een kotasie vir jou bezigheid en natuurlijk ook vir hulp um, as hulle in so iets die gevangenis is. Dank jylle. Sy, sy is besonderhede, sy is besonderhede, sal op die skerm verskyn, jylle kan om enige tijd kontak, maar ons gaan jylle groet tot de volgende keer, shalom. Sorry, Peter, guys. Yeah, sorry guys. This is the blueprint. This is the <laughs> This is the blueprint that you're ready for. Uh, yeah, I have money. Sorry, blueprint. Um okay, I'll start again. You listen to the uh yeah, fuck what bar rule donkey. It's in your fight of attack. Sorry, Peter, guys. <laughs>